Hello, my name is Philip Carré. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Public Administration and Sociology at Erasmus University Rotterdam and I'm also a member of the Cost Action Empowering the Next Generation of Social Enterprise Scholars. In my research I look at uh, the role um, social enterprises and other hybrid organizations can play in the creation of public value and the ecosystems that enable them to do so. If you want to know more about my research, please have a look at my website, hybridorganizations.com, or write me an email at carré at essp.eur.nl. In this short video, I'm going to tell you about the two chapters, which are contributed to the open access book on social enterprise in Western Europe. As I said, I've written two uh, chapters, one on the situation and the context of social enterprise in the Netherlands, and a second one in which I compare the situation in the Netherlands with that in Germany and in Belgium. And as I said, in this short video I'm going to tell you a little bit about both of these chapters. Let's begin with the situation in the Netherlands. Here we see that the Netherlands has a long and rich tradition with hybrid public service provision, which means there is a long tradition of public services being provided by other actors than the state. And this all makes for a notoriously fragmented and diverse third sector in the Netherlands. You could say that the Netherlands already for a long time, for decennia, for maybe even for uh, um, uh, more than 100 years has rich tradition with social enterprises. And so there is now confusion and ambiguity with the concept of social enterprise, which is a new concept which has been brought from the outside. There is of course an international definition of social enterprises, the definition used by the European Union, but as the Netherlands already has a lot of uh, organizations which combine social and economic value uh, provision, we see that the international definition is too big as it would apply to many if not most of the third sector organizations that we have in the Netherlands. That is why Social Enterprise NL, which is uh, an advocacy body for social enterprises, has devised a more narrow definition in which organizations have to generate 50% uh, of their income on the marketplace. But this uh, narrow Dutch definition of social enterprises only applies to social startups. And those of those we now also have many more, besides the more traditional, third sector organizations. There now is a multitude of examples of social enterprise startups in the Netherlands, mainly on the local level. Social enterprises which have only recently been created, which also call themselves uh, explicitly for, um, uh, social enterprises, different than the third sector organizations, traditional third sector organizations, and they're active in the fields of work integration, public health and welfare, and environmental protection. At the time being, though there uh, is now one in the making, there is no legal status or policy framework for social enterprises yet. That means that social enterprises can have various organizational and legal forms. And every organization can call itself a social enterprise, as there is no uh, legally binding definition of that term. And many organizations, also more traditional third sector organizations, do that because of a certain social enterprise bias. There is a hype around social enterprise, it, seem, it appears to be hip and coming, so everyone wants to be a social enterprise, even though it is at the moment not yet that much that clear what an organization that calls a social enterprise is, and in how far it actually differs from the more traditional third sector organizations we already know for centuries in this country. There now are attempts is, uh, made by politics, but also by uh, advocacy bodies like Social Enterprise NL to capture the essence of social enterprise and to distinguish social enterprises in the Netherlands from other hybrids. So we see that the sector itself is struggling with coming up with uh, a definition. Politics is struggling to come up with a definition. So far, uh, there's a definition and legal form in the making, but so far nothing of that struggle has yet materialized, it remains to be seen what will happen when the Netherlands eventually gets a new government. The situation in the Netherlands is somehow comparable to that in Belgium and Germany. 
here are all countries with uh, conservative corporatist welfare regimes based on the subsidiarity principle, which means that in principle it should not be the state which uh, from the cradle to the grave arranges everything for its citizens, but society itself should step up to the plate. In these um, welfare states, social enterprises are not necessarily, as already pointed out with the case of the Netherlands, a new phenomenon. It's just a new name which is put uh, on already existing organizational forms, as all these three countries, Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands, have a long history of service provision through other organizations than the state. We now see in all three countries a rise of new style social enterprises, what I also uh, often call social startups, which are more linked to the American and uh, uh, UK uh, definitions and discourses of social innovation. And the whole social innovation uh, literature uh, is uh, more guiding in the development and the rise of social enterprises in these countries, social enterprise startups, I have to say. As there already exists a big, uh, a big uh, uh, number of organizations in all of these countries, which could also be labeled social enterprises, there's of course competition between these more traditional organizations and the new social startups. There's also a little bit of conflict. There are tensions. More uh, traditional social enterprises, third sector organizations, often criticize social startups for commercialization of social welfare. Aren't they not, in essence, companies, private companies, which are social washing their activities to make them look more social? than they actually are. And there are also issues because with the rise of these new social enterprises uh, arising in a relationship with governments. Governments also still do not really know what to make of these new organizations. We see that there are issues, there's also friction between government as funding agency and as a regulator. In uh, uh, this ch the chapters I also uh, focus on several of these frictions awareness and recognition for example governments do not really know yet what to make of social enterprise startups what kind of organizations are those they often do not yet recognize them as something new what uh, um, uh, what kind of new organization are they and they also don't rec are not aware yet or very well aware of the uh, role they are playing in the creation of public value these organizations therefore uh, have problems with funding and procurement uh, very complicated to get into the sometimes closed uh, culture at play at government where new things are often uh, looked at with more suspicion than for example in a commercial world. Organizations also find there are difficulties in matching policies with how they work, in other words how government is organized is totally different than how social enterprises are organized they have to uh, uh, get uh, um, uh, used to that. As hybrid organizations, they always also have problems fitting into categories that government has created. And of course, because they are hybrids, they are also accountability issues. Organizations find it hard to account, be accountable about how they create essentially divergent, conflicting um, values. And there are also issues with impact measurement. This all makes that uh, the last word is not yet spoken about the rise of social enterprise in Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands. It is a very interesting research field to see what is happening in this very uh, um, fast evolving sector. I hope I've captured uh, 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 this uh, not only in this short video but also in my uh, two chapters which I invite you again to read and I look forward to any comments which you might have after doing so. Thanks a lot.